so first of all, there's a couple things that you're going to need. First is, of course, some paper. You don't want to use normal paper. You want to make sure that you do use watercolor paper because otherwise your paper will, will start to buckle and bend and it just won't look good because we're adding water to it. Um, I'm using the Canton Watercolor Cold Press 9 by 12. This comes with 30 sheets and you can actually just remove these pages if you like as well. You're also going to need some watercolor paint. I am using the, uh, what are these, Reeves. These are the watercolors in the tube. I actually like them in a tube a lot better than having um, a palette. You can also get the palettes. There's really, it's really just like your personal preference. Um, so these are all the tubes. This comes in a set actually. I'm gonna link everything below so that you guys can check some of my recommendations out for paints and things like that. So here are your colors and this set also comes with a little mixing tray and some brushes. So I'm just going to be using this one single brush for the demonstration. Um, it's good to have watercolor brushes and the softer I find the better, the softer the, um, the hair. And I actually like a round tip for watercolor especially, so you want to make sure that you have a nice brush to work with as well. Um, and my mixing tray here, the great thing about watercolor is that you can leave your paint in it and you don't even have to clean it up and if you've mixed colors and stuff, you can just go back to them later. All you have to do is add water and they're good as new. So that is why my palettes are usually pretty messy. So I'm just going to be working with this anyways today just to kind of, I don't know, save on paint I suppose. Um, so you're also going to need a little paper towel. I've just got one off to the side here. I'll try to line this up for you guys properly. The angle is kind of strange right now. Um, and then lastly, you're going to need a glass or a container of water. The great thing about watercolor as well is that it cleans up really easily. It's water based, so it just cleans up with water. You don't really have to worry about getting it on anything. Um, so yeah. I'm going to show you a couple of techniques to start just to kind of get your feet wet, no pun intended, um, in watercolor. So first of all, we're going to try a wet on wet, which is basically when you take some water, let me put my water over here, when you take some water on your brush and you kind of paint out what you want to color in um, onto the paper. So what should we do? I'll just do just a block of wet paint here. And what this is going to do, when you add your paint, it's actually going to allow it to bleed together. Um, and wherever you place water, if you're using watercolor paper, especially wherever you place it, the color's not going to really go outside of that. So next I'm just going to take some water and I'll just re-wet this blue color that I've used. You can also just grab a new color. Um, and not use old ones like me. So you're just going to take this and then you're going to just apply it onto the wet surface and you'll see this kind of gives it a lighter wash um, but that is kind of what wet on wet does is give you a lighter wash. It turns out a little bit more fuzzy um, around the edges when you do it this way. So there's one technique. You can actually just wet your brush a little more. The more water you add, obviously the more diluted it's going to become. So then you can start to kind of get an ombre kind of gradient effect going. Um, so once again, just a little bit more water. So there's one technique is wet on wet. Um, let me show you another example. Say I wanted to do a heart. So let's paint a heart in water. It's the little guy right here and fill it in, and then let's grab some red, and a little more water, and then you can apply that to the water, and it will kind of go into the shape where you've painted the water. You can see I'm just dabbing in the paint right now. You can actually go back if you want and make areas a little darker and I'm just dabbing. It's a really easy technique if you just want to dab the water into place. 
like so. And if you need to just get the color off your brush, all you need to do is just swish it around in water. Um, you can also take some excess paint off and water off with your paper towel. That's why it's just nice to have here. If you want to go in with more of a drier brush, you can actually like pick up some of this color and spread it around a little bit. So it's up to you um, on the technique that you want to use. You can just experiment with doing different washes and things like that. So I will show you now the other technique, which is a wet on dry. So we're not going to wet the background first. We're just going to paint onto the thing. So onto the paper, sorry. Um, so what should I paint? Let's try maybe a leaf. I'll do green, just get my paint nice and wet again, and you'll see that it kind of starts to become paint again from it to dried up state. So you can get the intensity of color you want by adding more water or by using more paint. So I've kind of got a medium tone kind of going right here. So this is simple. You just don't have to even wet the paper first. You're just going to go for it and paint. So let's just do like a little leaf in here. Maybe with a stem. And watercolor is really forgiving, so don't worry if you kind of make a mistake. You can always kind of work with it. I'm just filling this half of the leaf in with some water to dilute it a little bit. I don't really have much of a plan going into this, so um, you can kind of start to get some really cool effects, especially if you have like a darker edge. I really like how it looks more watercolory that way. But yeah, just play around with it and try different brush strokes, try different um, textures. I'll show you kind of what it can look like darker to lighter. So there's, hold on, start with like a dark blue, if you add a little more water to that, you can start to get a little lighter, add a little more water. And you're getting lighter and lighter as you go, that's probably too light. So you can really get a nice range of tones and everything as well. All right, so I was trying to think of what I could paint to kind of teach you guys a couple other basics that I like to do. Um, again, this is gonna be your own style that you create. My style is kind of, well, if you've seen my mobile case line at all, it's kind of more simple. Um, I don't go into a lot of detail, I just kind of do cute little uh, characters and things like that. So I thought today maybe we'd, we would try a pineapple together so that you can see how I would go about doing that. So if my paper is dry enough, I'll start up here. And I've grabbed a yellow, a yellow color here. Actually, I'm just gonna add more yellow. So all it takes is seriously like the smallest, tiniest little amount of paint. Unless of course you're doing a really large drawing, um, which in case you are, I recommend mixing up your colors beforehand and getting more of it into your palette. So I'm just gonna use this yellow. So a pineapple, has, as you know, it kind of looks like a grid inside. So what we're gonna do instead is kind of make shapes um, to kind of make up the shape of a pineapple. As you know, it's kind of an oval shape. So we're gonna make little blocks that kind of make up the oval shape. So we're gonna paint maybe a couple of squares, just random shapes. And you wanna make sure that 
whatever you are working on in watercolor, you want to make sure that if you don't want the colors to blend together, you either want to go back in when the previous thing that you've painted is dry, or like I am doing now, make sure that you leave a space, a white um, space of paper around the previously painted thing. Otherwise, it's going to end up like this. You're going to paint something. Let's say we painted a square here, and then let's say we wanted to go in with a green color. And then if we brought it right up to the yellow, you're going to see this happen. And it's just going to start to like blend into the yellow and it's just not really a good look because if you want to keep things separated and have those um, lines, then you don't want that to happen. So back to our little pineapple guy. I'm just kind of making these random shapes and leaving that space in between each of them. And I'm shaping this into a pineapple. And you can always go back in if you want. If you have one that you've painted that's a little too light, just add a little bit more of the paint. You can take your time with this. I'm going kind of fast just for the video's sake, but you can see here what I've done. I've just kind of made this oval shape. And the great thing too about watercolor is that you don't have to make it perfect. Um, I think imperfect watercolor is actually something that I enjoy a lot more than something that doesn't really look like it's watercolor. <laughs> I think if things have too much detail sometimes it can take away from the effect that it's actually a watercolor painting. So now I'm going to go in with a green color here. I'm just going to get a little of the water off my brush. I don't want it too, too wet. And then we're going to do the leaf. Now, pineapple leaves can be tall, or they can be I don't really have a plan going in this. I'm not looking at a pineapple, so I might be a little off, but whatever. If you need to, definitely look at a reference photo. That is something that I do all the time, like if I'm painting a picture of a cat, I will pull up a bunch of pictures of cats on my mobile device or phone or whatever I am looking at. Just so that you can get the right um, shapes and the right positioning and things like that. So this might look a little funny. So basically I'm just painting the outlines of the leaves or are they leaves? I don't know. Um, and then I'm just filling it in. Really simple. You can tell that the water just kind of flows around. So I think I'm happy with that for our little pineapple. So there is something that I would use if you wanted to add maybe darker yellow on some of these. Just to give it a little more interest. And again, just staying within the areas that you've already painted. So something like that. So that was a very, very basic tutorial. Um, I just kind of wanted to show you guys some of the basics with the, the wet on wet and the, the wet on dry techniques so that you can try it out. Um, just if you're trying this yourself, honestly, just play around with it because you can find your own techniques and stuff. I didn't do any like traditional type watercolor training or anything like that. It's just mostly from how I like painting and what I've kind of developed as my own style. Um, so maybe in the future I will do some other videos on how to paint specific objects or things like that. So I don't know if you guys would like to see that, if you want to see more 
paint with me videos, definitely let me know because that would help a lot and I would actually know that you guys want to watch them. And also if you have anything that you want me to paint, maybe I can do that for you as well. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and I really hope that you kind of find fun in watercolor painting because it should be fun and you shouldn't take it too seriously, I don't think. Um, especially when you're just developing your own style. So thank you guys so much. I will see you next time. Ever since then, since I started going with kind of a white, um, more minimalist theme, I have been asked constantly how I edit my photos and what apps I use. So I thought today I would kind of take the guesswork out of everything and show you exactly how I do it.